I think the idea of community service by young people is growing. It's growing in schools, it's growing in, sc in school leavers. But the great thing is we've got to get the older generation to accept this as being genuine, which is very difficult. I mean, one will go up to somebody and say, well, do you want any help? And they'll look at you. So you don't want to give up any help. You're a youngster. You should be out taking drugs and go on marches and things like this. Peter Harvey is 18. He's a community service volunteer, and he spent the last year working in a mental hospital in York. This is typical of the work done by more than 200 community service volunteers working in centres from Cardiff to Cambridge, from Perth to Penzance. What sort of people are the volunteers? What do they do and why do they do it? Morning, oh, good morning, David. All your letters are here, ready for you. And uh, this phone call, Miss Barber helped visit David Nabarro is 17, a Londoner. He left public school with a year to spare before Oxford. For that year, this office has been the centre of his life. He also is a community service volunteer. He runs Youth Action York. Good morning, Joe. Joe, I got a letter from a chap called Paul Manning. The address is on the letter. Um, could you write to him? Dear Paul, I enclose copies of our latest three newsletters describing the work and activities of Youth Action York. I think that they will give you sufficient information on the subject to keep you in touch. I look forward to seeing you when you come back to York. Y.S. Okay, you do that. Thanks very much. Hello, could I speak to Mr. Blackburn, please? David Nabarro, Youth Action York here. Hello, Mr. Blackburn. I'm ringing you up as Vice Chairman of the Ebor Round Table. Uh, we're coming, I'm coming round to talk tonight, as you know. Um, I wondered if you could tell me what sort of time um, the talk will finish. Yeah. Right here, thanks very much. Bye. Youth Action York was created about one and a half to two years ago when the York Community Council decided that something should be done to coordinate community service done by young people in the city. We have on average about 25 decorating teams working every week during the school term time and about 100 to 150 old people being visited on and off throughout the year. There are about 400 young people doing this sort of work there's great room for expansion, and we're pretty sure that it will. Unwillingness to trust us, I think, is the chief opposition that we ran into. Other opposition was, I think, local apathy. And I don't really mind saying that I do think York is an apathetic city, in that the people are not prepared to accept something new as being a going concern. There's not really been anything like this before in York in recent years, and it just was not accepted by the old people when it started. Systematically considering the needs, old people, very little needs to be done. It's a very great tradition of social service work with the old, though practical work, decorating, a very important facet. On the other hand, work with children, very important. Not much is done on council estates, and we can help very much there. York's got a beautiful facade, city walls and so on, but on the other hand, some of the areas that are slightly out of sight are very bad indeed and need quite a lot of work. Also, other amenity provision is very important, adventure playgrounds and so on. Basically, work with children, I think, is the best thing that we can do. York Station, 8.30 a.m. Today, more than 100 children from a deprived area of the city are being taken to the seaside at Scarborough by David Nambaro and 40 of his part-time volunteers. It all started when I left school in December and I wanted to find some way of involving myself during the period between school and university. So I applied to voluntary service overseas. I went to see them and they said I was too young and also the period I wanted to serve for was too short. 
and they gave me a number of addresses of people to write off to. One of these was Community Service Volunteers, which is an organization which sends young people for nine months, a year, four months, five months, to places in Britain where they can provide valuable long-term community service. I went to see them and liked the sound of some of the jobs they offered. I wanted to be independent, have a position in which I could have a certain amount of flexibility. And when the offer of the York situation came up, I took it immediately. I knew very little about CSV and its organization or about the York situation in which I was going to be put. It was just an opportunity to get away from home and to do something on my own, though I must say to me at first coordinating community service in a city sounded rather do-goodish and I was very scared of what it might involve. So really I came here knowing very little. David Barrow came to school and asked a few people if they'd like to look after teams of younger volunteers and I volunteered. But uh, a fortnight later I heard nothing, so I went into the office and found David up to his neck in administration and dived in head first and said, I'll help, <laughs> not knowing what I'd let myself in for. The volunteers we have come from every school uh, of the secondary type, secondary moderns, grammar schools, public schools. They, they all mix together freely. There's no sort of uh, class distinction between them, more or less. The public school boys uh, come in, we, we, we class them as one of ourselves. And who is in your group? Well, my interest was originally in voluntary work overseas, but I felt that um, work in this country might be more interesting and valuable to me. At home, I felt I'd be more in direct contact. And also, this experience is bound to be useful for my later work as a teacher. At the moment we have about 120 children here and 40 volunteers. These are split into groups of five or six, each with one or two volunteers. We've arranged a meeting at between four o'clock and five o'clock with different groups at different times for tea. Then follows a free ice cream. Otherwise the volunteers are left to their own devices, asking children what they particularly would like to do and letting them do it. It relies very much on the uh, local volunteers who are prepared to give a lot of time to help us. And there are quite a number of those who do. On the other hand, there is a great deal of reticence among, especially the girls, to take on responsibility because they're frightened of it. <laughs> I have to lead practically a double life most of the time, acting as a person who is in with the volunteers some of the time and acting as a sober, mature, one hopes, individual with counsellors and adults who one's dealing with, with the social workers especially because they expect that all the problems that are passed on to be dealt with in a mature fashion. On the other hand, it does not pay to get too, much, too far in with the people who are volunteers in youth action, otherwise the small amount of authority that I may have will get completely lost. Detachment is essential so that in positions where a decision has to be made and people's backs might be got up, I've got to be able to do it without getting shouted at, told to mind my own business or anything like that. I think we might start by talking about the play project first of all. Um, a bit about this committee is discussing the main activities of the group. The play project, Meals on Wheels, decorating for old people and work in a nearby mental hospital. Through the committee, David Nabarro allocates work to the 400 or so volunteers. Laurel Barker is 21. She runs the play project for 300 children during school holidays. The play project in York was Mr Nabarro's idea. There is an area where our children play more or less on the streets entirely. There are one or two small old-fashioned playgrounds with swings, roundabouts, etc., but not very much. 
um, these children with a wonderful park like this could do something far more. I came in almost accidentally. I asked London again and again to provide some full-time organiser because he couldn't manage the whole thing himself as well as other work in New York. And I happened to write right at the end of term and say, look, I wouldn't mind some social work somewhere in England. What can you suggest? And they suggested this. The response which was expected by David Nabarro was tremendous, uh, something in the 500 range. He has big ideals, and I think this is wonderful. I'm not like that. I don't expect such a response. Um, uh, it has almost come up to that. At times, particularly at the beginning, we had 400. After a week, it dropped a while, but has, after that, has kept very constantly at two to 300, which is more than I ever expected and is quite good, I think. There tends to be a, a, a flux the whole time of children coming in. We don't always have the same ones, some constant, but otherwise a constant changeover as people go on holiday and come back. We have roughly 10 to 15 volunteers coming per week. They tend to come regularly throughout the week, and most have come far more than the original volunteer, which is, again, encouraging, very encouraging, because they obviously think this is something either enjoyable or worthwhile, one of the two or probably both. Um, partly, I think, too, because they haven't much to do themselves during the holidays, and it's quite a social get-together for them. I think we're past the age when you'll ask somebody to do good work for children in the old-fashioned do-gooder sort of sense. Um, very few of them have a sense of duty. I think it'd be marvellous, but of course it's an ideal. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Tom, can you give us the situation on decorating jobs? Tom Wilson is 18. He's at a local grammar school, and for the past year, he's been David Nabarro's main lieutenant. Most of his spare time is spent working in the Youth Action Office, but he also runs the decorating project. And, um, we have a great list of people who want jobs doing, but we're going to do 10 Murray Street and Mrs. Hodgson. Uh, Albert and Wolf and uh, Margaret Thompson and her friend are going down to do this. Um. As far as the decorating are concerned, uh, contact with the old people, personal contact more or less, they're very pleased. Any difference? Yeah, it's really nice. We weep if I look any longer. Well, I've been in youth action approximately 18 months now. I started before David Nabarro came. Um, my first ever job was gardening. I brought you a paint before. Um, Thanks very much. <laughs> How's it going? Very well. <coughs> Have you uh, used demolition before, Albert? No, I haven't. No, I didn't think you had. It's nice. Well, this project today, uh, decorating for Mrs. Hodgson, uh, came to us from a social worker. I came down to see Mrs. Hodgson a week ago, uh, explained the situation that we'd get the paint and we'd arrange payment afterwards, and told her the volunteers would be coming on Friday to do the job. I later visited her uh, during the week and confirmed all these points, got the colours for her, and the paint shop delivered the paint. You know, strokes on it, you know, just, just slap it about. And the most uh, common comment we get is, it's, it's good to see, see these young people doing it when you've got all these stories about them breaking trees down, etc, etc. Uh, this we get all the time. It's not particularly surprising because uh, a lot of the children now do it rather than break trees down. And we have one or two grumbles from people walking up and saying, well, there's people to pay to do this. Why do you do it? Well, we do it because we feel this is a, a, a need that needs doing, more or less. And uh, we're quite happy to do it unpaid, etc. I'm not quite sure about other people doing voluntary work, but personally myself, it keeps me uh, occupied in my spare time as well as busy times as well. It's a bit of a tie, but I enjoy doing it. I don't consider it as a charity work or anything. Uh, if anybody mentioned do good to me, I'd go up the wall. But uh, it's enjoyable. I like talking to old people. I like talking to young people as well, meaning young people, young mothers, etc. Um, and it's amazing how many troubles you get poured out on you, but you get used to this. And uh, 
find out how husbands have died, how sons have died, etc. And all this helps with the career I hope to go into, which is social work. But more or less, I just enjoy it. Thanks very much, Deacon. Um, on to another point. Um, there's the decorating situation is a bit bad. Uh, what now about <coughs> Meals on Wheels? Well, David Rice is another part-time volunteer. He and some local girls spend each Saturday providing Meals on Wheels for old people in the city. The project is run by an occupational therapist from Sheffield, Barbara Pilly. In the beginning I was at she doing youth action in Sheffield and visiting handicapped children and visiting people in hospital. And then when I came to York, I found out the, about the youth action here. Dave, four more dinners ready. David wanted to um, have a larger project, so he suggested Meals on Wheels. So I said I'd do this for him, so I organised a group. We had 12 people, six from schools and six from our college, and I organised them to shop and cook on a rotor basis. The service is carried out on Saturday morning and we provide ten uh, old ladies and gentlemen with the meal and we come in about half past ten and cook the meal, it's out at twelve o'clock and um, well they thoroughly appreciate it. <laughs> We find the old people like pastries, so we cook quite a few pies and um, sponge puddings they like. Um, yeah, it's quite varied, the meals. Well, the meal we've been cooking today is potatoes, liver, peas and gravy and um, apple tart and custard. Peter, I had a letter the other day from Young Volunteers of Merseyside asking us about how young volunteers in York were being used in hospitals. I wonder if you could give me some guidance about how to reply to this one. Um, well, I think first you ought to mention the fact that there has been a CSV working in a mental hospital whose task was to see what the opportunities were for young people. I think this is quite important. I first heard about community service volunteers when we started a social service group at school and this was started under the auspices of uh, CSV. When I first heard about it I didn't do much, I didn't rush out and say well I must do this. Um, at that time I had a provisional place at university and I decided to take that up. When I found that my exam results weren't quite up to scratch I had a year to spend and I thought CSV would perhaps make the year more enjoyable if not more useful. I was very nervous on the train when I came up. I felt, oh, I don't know what I'm coming in for. And nearly, when I got to York, I nearly came home again. But uh, I started here, and uh, I've been here ever since. I was told at the office that my task here is to see if there are any opportunities for, you, for using young voluntary help, and if there is the opportunity to start getting them in this, therefore, was a very much foundation sort of work. I was to see if there was anything, then do something about it. And so I decided first that I wouldn't rush into things and start flooding the place with the volunteers, because this only breeds inefficiency and plans fail. And everybody says, well, volunteers are no good, are they? And so the first three months or so were spent in looking around. One can only see how a hospital functions by being a member of staff useless me coming on to ward at half past nine and looking around and saying well we could use volunteers here and there um, this would breed resentment and also I would have been unqualified the only way I could have learnt anything was by being on the nursing staff I was paid as a nursing assistant um, but I kept 30 shillings a week of it for pocket money and the rest was sent back to CSV 
Well, I had to learn a lot from Mr. Harvey when he first came here and uh, was accepted by the superintendent of the hospital to explore the possibilities. We have always spoken of shortage of staff in the mental hospital service. Now, here was our opportunity to see how we could make use of people who could work in an auxiliary fashion and persons who came in voluntary and presumably with an enthusiasm for helping the persons we looked after. I saw all sorts of things that I wouldn't have seen before. I saw death. I saw suffering. Which is all quite a shock when you first see it. I found that when I first saw it, I was sort of terribly emotional about it and said, this poor chap's dead. I remember once the first body I helped lay out, I was uh, standing there very quietly and somebody was whistling away helping me and I was sort of most annoyed. I told him to shut up and he just laughed at me. And the next time I laid out a body, I was doing exactly the same thing. One's got to sort of not get so involved because it just makes one so depressed. It's a terribly depressing thing to see people in pain, people who can't talk to you, people who have no communication with the outside world and just lying there. I think it matured me. Hello, Mark. Tea time. It is important for young people to be involved in some way in the community, uh, whether it be a mental hospital, whether it be an old people's home, whether it be a just helping children. I think, there's, for a start, there's a tremendous That's amount nice. that can be done, that must be done. And at the moment, there isn't the labour available. There aren't the people available. And when you've got young people who are keen to help, who want to help, why should you waste the opportunity? I think it matures them. It is a positive use to the community, which is perhaps the most important thing, that they are being useful. I mean, you might say that working in a factory is useful perhaps not as useful as it is working in a hospital, in an old people's home, trying to help people. I think one gets a tremendous kick out of feeling one's doing something useful. It's very sort of selfish, but provided the job's done, does it matter? sorted out for September. No long of mm. Hello, is that WRVS? Uh, I've always loved organising. Um, I suppose that has given me a certain amount of experience in this sort of work. But I've never had any experience of community service myself at all. I'm not really a community service type. The reason why I like this job in York is because of the organisation rather than because of the idea of giving service. We're going to be doing it on, just letting you know, we're going to be doing it on scooters now, seeing as it proved such a success, okay? It's not at all easy, I don't think, to run an organisation like this purely as a do-gooding organisation. I tried to make it the done thing, this is why Youth Action York has quite a large social side. There are quite a number of dances, parties, arranged primarily for youth action people. The social aspect of our work is very important, I think, in that it does encourage volunteers to think that this is not do-gooding for the socially conscious. It gets a lot of volunteers into the organisation who would not otherwise join because they think it's all do-gooding. Um, especially those who come along, first of all, for all the social side of the thing, and then come up to me afterwards and say, I'd like to try a hand at decorating, or I'd like to join you on a play project, or something like that.
quite a lot of my time is spent in talking to adults about our work to try to get them to help us, whether it's materially, with vocal support, or with money. And this is something that I haven't found too difficult to do, probably because of my background. I hate to say it, I think perhaps the public school background has helped here. I find myself quite often either going into the office of quite a lot of um, managing directors of firms or councillors to try to sell on the idea that community service by young people is a worthwhile thing. I don't think this is a burden or otherwise is something that perhaps shouldn't be done. My people might say that we spend our whole time conning things. I don't think this is true. Being a charitable organisation, we do rely, rely on financial support and I've got to try to use what background I've got to its best effect by doing this sort of work. It's not too difficult really because most people are very keen to accept what we're trying to do. They think that the visible records of our work are sufficiently good to justify them helping us in whatever way they might be and they always are very quick to help us. Well, I think there's vast scope not only in York but uh, everywhere in the country for this kind of work. Uh, when David first came to York uh, we in local authorities looked a little uh, askance at this. We didn't know quite what he intended to do, but uh, over the months he's harnessed the energy of the young people to this cause. Uh, I personally am um, chairman of the Mentally Handicapped Children's Society in York, and when I called upon him for help, it was forthcoming straight away, and he proved a vast assistance to us in our work. And I know that uh, over the holiday period and in various aspects of York, he is done much work with his helpers and I think that we're better for it and so are the children who he uh, controls are better for it too. I think it gives a very good image to the normal young children of York. I think that um, not only is it an education for them but it's an education for us. Oh, I think it's very much of a surprise when, when some of the old generation hear about young people doing this. They, they conceive of youngsters of being long-haired and taking drugs and sleeping on the Brighton Pier. And it comes as a tremendous shock to them to find that there are some young people who do care about other people and not only about themselves. And the only way we can sort of get over this stigma, I'm talking about young people in general, is by more of them doing this sort of thing and getting more publicity.